I am so sick of chickens. Yes, a penguin. So much better. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Pat, and welcome back to another mod showcase. And today, we are going to take a look at Twilight Forest. This mod is completely epic. It adds a brand new dimension, so many bosses, and the structures are so crazy. But yeah, we must start with the portal, which looks really awesome, actually. It is so cool looking. So yeah, it's set up quite a bit different than a normal portal. So this is what you're going to need. A diamond, some flowers, and some buckets of water. So this is exactly what you have to do. You got to put four squares just like that. Fill them completely up with water. Completely. You can't just like miss a little bit. And just surround it with flowers. It doesn't really matter how they're set up. Any color of flowers will do. It just has to go directly around it like this. And then just one diamond. It's it's kind of cheap. It's not really that expensive. You toss it in and please work. Really fun. There we go. I was like, it's not going to work, is it? And there we go. Portal to Twilight Forest and let's jump in. So yeah, here we are. I actually spawned in like the darkest place ever. This is a dark forest right here. There's a ton of different biomes and this place is amazing looking. I mean, look at that structure over there. That is crazy. But yeah, there is so much stuff to show and probably the coolest thing, the trophies you get for killing the bosses. Like these are so epic. You can like display them in your house. I really like the Urgast one. It actually moves. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get to Twilight Forest is make a map so you can actually like find your way around. I mean, it's going to be hard to find everything without it, but of course, sometimes you'll see a giant structure like that. I mean, this dimension is freaking huge. So a map just makes things a little easier on yourself. And yeah, ignore the worms that are like on top of here for a second. I'll show you what makes that after. And here we go. There's three different maps. The first one, the most important, the magic map. And to make it, you need a bunch of paper. And in the middle, a magic map focus. And to craft that, you need glowstone dust, so really easy to get that. A raven's feather. Ravens, you'll see them flying around in this dimension, like, all over the place. And also torch berries. And these are in caves. They're really obvious because they glow, so you really can't miss them. So it's really not that hard to actually make the map. And when you do, what you want to do, put it in your hand and right-click. And it starts to load in. And structures are going to show up on this. You can see right next to us. Like that structure right there. That is the Twilight Lich. And the picture for them is basically what they look like. The Hydra's. Like the Hydra's head and stuff like that. And you see right here. I'm pointing towards it right now. That little tiny thing is actually a hollow hill. Um, I will show you guys one. You see how it's really small. And the one way down there at the bottom is a giant hollow hill. Which has like a lot of rewards. It's basically a cave with like a million ore and spawners and chests in it. But yeah. Traveling around the area you will need these maps. And... As you travel, it will uncover the other parts of the map too. So extremely useful and definitely needed. Without it, you're just going to be wandering around so much. All right, so the next map, the maze map. This one, not quite as important, but pretty useful too. So paper and a maze map focus. This actually comes in like dungeon chests. There is no recipe for it. And with this one, same thing. You just right click it and it just shows like the inside of a building. Right now, I'm kind of like, you know out in the open sky but if i was in that tower it would like show all the rooms like really small so you could actually like see like where the turns and stuff are if you're in a maze or something like that so quite useful and this one very similar maze slash ore map so it does the same thing except you can see ore on the map too all right so this one extremely expensive you need to take your maze map a block of gold diamond and iron to make it so yeah this one same thing right click it and only difference or will show up on it as well. And I believe sometimes you can see caves too. So it can be pretty useful when you're exploring in some caves. Twilight Force actually does add in some really cool weapons and armor. So we will get started on those. And a lot of them with like enchantments already on them, which is always awesome. And here we go. First one, Ironwood Set. It's as strong as iron, but you know, they have like Protection 1, Aqua Infinity, stuff like that already on them. And Feather Falling. So the thing is, though, guys, um, the durability is a bit better, I believe. And the recipe for these is all ironwood ingots, so pretty much what you'd expect. And what I noticed is the only one without any type of enchantment is the ironwood hoe. I feel like they should have... The ho hoes never get any love. I know there isn't anything that would have really helped it too much, but on breaking, they could have done that. 
none of the hoes with any love. It's just, it, you know, it hurts me just to see it. But yeah, pretty cool set. And this set right here, the Fiery set. It's got Fiery Aura on it, which is a special enchantment from this mod. It's really similar to Thorns, except when enemies hit you, it lights them on fire. So that can be quite helpful. And this one is stronger than Diamond. And yeah, the rest would be pretty much the same. Fiery ingots, so you can make those pretty easily. And the pickaxe is quite cool. The fiery pick, it has auto smelting on it, meaning... Actually, let me just switch into survival here. I put down some iron ore. And basically, you probably imagine, you know, you break it. It actually turns right into the ingot. Very cool. So you don't even need a furnace. Not with this pickaxe. Pretty awesome looking, too. So yeah, very cool and unique item right there. For the next set, the Steel Leaf set. This one's got like projectile protection, blast protection, fire protection, more feather falling. And this one, as strong as diamond, swords got looting too. And you can see all these different enchantments. And once again, the hoe with nothing. Not even on breaking. It's, it's rude. It hurts me to see it. But yeah, very strong and powerful set. And the recipe for these is Steel Leaves. And you're probably wondering how you actually get these items like th to make them. They're all in, like, dungeon chests. You constantly are going to see all the stuff needed to make these. And a lot of these items themselves will be in the chest, too. All right, for the next one, the Nightly Set. No enchantments on this one. It's actually pretty new to the mod, I believe. And the Sword. Extra damage to armored targets, which is pretty cool. The Axe to unarmored targets. So if you can't, like, if you got, an, you just put one in each hand. Get battle gear. If they've got armor or no armor, you can just switch. So kind of cool. And the Pick, extra damage to armored targets. And right here, the Phantom Helm and the Phantom Plate, no recipe for these. And the other recipe for these is Night Metal Ingots. So nothing for this yet. It's probably really new, the Phantom stuff. And a couple interesting items too. The Maze Breaker, there's no recipe for this one either. I'm not sure how you get it or if it's implemented quite yet. But Efficiency 4 on Breaking 3 and Fortune 2. The Minotaur Axe, extra damage while charging. So basically, if you're sprinting with it and attack, you'll do extra damage, and it drops off the Minnow Shroom boss. These ones are really cool. I feel like I should show them. Um, the Scepter of Twilight and the Scepter of Life Training. I believe these drop off the Twilight Lich and this one, the Zombie Scepter. So I'm going to grab like a mob and let's test them. All right, guys, so let's test this out. And there is a zombie. And if I want to fight him with the Scepter of Twilight, right click, six damage. Pretty much owns them. I mean, they can't even get close to me. Let's try the other ones out. This one, life draining. Let me hit me. You can hit me, bro. All right, life draining. So now I will get some health back as I attack with this one. So definitely very useful. And you can see it actually puts slowness on him for a second too. And this one's probably the coolest one, the zombie scepter. Use it. You spawn in a zombie that has strength on him that will fight for you. Take him out, bro. Own that zombie. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, definitely pretty awesome. I mean, I love this. So, my loyal zombie will kill for me. So, fighting bosses, if you spawn in a couple of these, you can spawn in a lot, actually. Like, you can spawn in, like, five, ten of these with all the durability. You can completely own pretty much anything since they have strength buffs on them, too. So, now we're on to the bosses, and there's some very epic ones. And I did put on some armor. Got the fiery set on right now, and... I look epic. I mean, look at this. This is so cool looking, especially with the glow, too. And, guys, one thing I really did want to mention about the map is on the map, sometimes you're going to see something that actually does not bring you to a boss. It actually brings you to a dude who gives you quests. He is the questing ram. And what you have to do is give him a bunch of wool, and he'll give you, like, one of every, like, block of ore, like diamond, emerald, and stuff like that. Just wanted to throw that out there because there is no spawn egg to actually, like, show him normally. But anyways, we are on to the bosses, and I am ready to kill some stuff. First one, Minnow Shroom. Actually, I believe is considered a mini boss. You don't actually get a trophy for killing this one, sadly. Be cool if you did. His, like, head or something. And here we go. 120 health. He's got the axe in his hand. He charges. He's the easiest boss, definitely, because he's so slow at fighting. You can just move around in a circle like this. Gonna kill you with your own weapon, bro. Kill you with your own weapon. You're way too slow. Oh my god, he's on fire because he attacked me. Actually got a hit off. Because I do have the fire reset on. And you can see, he actually knocks me into the air too. This is one tough, you know, mushroom. And he dropped the axe right there. And a bunch of Meave Stroganoff, which is some very good food from this mod. Okay, we're on to the second boss now. And it is the Urgast. 
this one he's really not that hard he's giant and scary as hell though like like this thing first time i ever saw it freaked me out so much all right ergast i need some room here i don't want it to like hit those with a fireball or something is there seriously water up here see water in the distance all right here we go ergast giant gast shoots fireballs at you has really big face very very big dude you obviously are going to want some type of like arrow to fight him because normally he's quite high in the sky and this is how you're going to take him out he shoots lots of gas fireballs at you at the same time and wow very noisy too also i forgot he makes it rain and you see like the ice going down below him you don't want to be below him it's going to hurt you pretty bad but he's so inaccurate with it you're probably not going to get like hit by it at all so what I'm going to do is finish him off. He really does not have any other moves. He is one of the easier bosses in this mod, in my opinion. So if you're wondering what the Urgast actually drops, he doesn't drop anything. Like a chest appears in his tower. And the materials he drops are actually for the fiery set. So a good way to get this set is to kill the giant gas. The gas is so big. All right, so the next one we're on to is the Twilight Lich. And this one has like a specific tactic to it. He has shields on him and he can't take damage unless you break him. Only way to do that is to reflect these ender pearls back at him. So you kind of have to be like really quick. Probably shouldn't even be fighting him out in the open. Like there's so much room for him to teleport. Normally we're inside like one small room. Come here, bro. Oh, and I knocked one off. So yeah, you have to break every single one of these. And then you can kill him. After that, it's pretty easy. So I'm just trying to show you guys exactly how the fight works. And... As you can see, I'm getting pretty much all of his shields down really quickly. So just punch like that. One more shield. Where are you? There you are. Fight me like a man, bro. No shields. And now, when I attack him, he spawns in all kinds of stuff, by the way, guys. Like, there's zombies everywhere. And he's down to 80. So he's actually a decent challenge. If you can't deflect these things, it is going to make it quite a bit more difficult. You'll be fighting him for a very long time. First time I ever fought him... I struggled so much because I had no idea how to break his shields. And he's still like shooting these at me. I'm pretty sure I caught that, bro. Come back here. Be a man. Don't keep teleporting. It's annoying. There's so much room out here. I've almost got him down. There's like explosions going on. And every single time I hit him, he teleports. Trying to make his way to the tower. Not going to let it happen, bro. Not going to let it happen. All right, we almost got him down. I just want to finish him off. All right, he's down to 13. Going everywhere. And bam. All right, one more hit, maybe. I got to sprint with this weapon to get the extra damage. He spawned so many zombies after us. And there he is. Ready for the kill. Let's go. Oh, and we took him out just barely in time. So as you can see, even with this gear on, he is quite challenging. You might want to bring some potions along with you as well. Oh, guys, and his drops were gold armor with, like, really nice enchantments on them. His trophy and his scepter of twilight. So very cool. And now the next boss we're going to fight is the Naga. Naga, not too bad. Only thing about the Naga is it destroys like everything. All blocks. The Naga is one brutal creature. Alright, so right now I have it set on easy just so I can like show you guys these fights. And the Naga has less health if he's on easy. If you have him on hard, that is really creepy. Those things are still floating. Can I hit it? All right, so yeah, the Naga actually has more health if it's on hard compared to easy and stuff like that. So this will affect it. He's 120 health, and it takes a long time to kill him if he has like 240, which is what he has on hard. So I'm going to try to attack him with these weapons. Here we go. So a loyal zombie will help me kill him. Basically, he circles around you and then charges in, and his body like breaks into pieces as he takes damage. Try to take him out here. He is down to 97 try to get him the scepter so yeah range weapon is definitely gonna help you a lot when fighting him and you can see he's getting smaller right now like a piece of him just flew off over there and we've got him down 42 it's raining horribly outside all right and he's almost dead and now he is at his quickest you definitely do have to be careful without good armor on when he hits you it does do a lot of damage right now with this armor on he can't even hurt me he's one of the easier bosses definitely um compared to the others and we have killed him. And you can see, he's actually dropped some Naga Scales and also the Naga Trophy. And these are used for the Naga Scale set. So this is one of the other sets. Very cool. I don't even know if I showed this one, actually, now that I think about it. But yeah, there is another set. This one, not a full set, just the chest and the legs. 
All right, guys, we are on to the hardest boss of all, the Hydra. He has 360 health, and he shoots fire at you like crazy. And if you go in close, he will bite you. So be careful. Uh, most of these attacks can be evaded, because you can see when he's about to attack, he opens his mouth. And the way to do damage to him is actually to shoot him in his mouth. So you have to be prepared. I'm ready here. If you shoot him at his body, he will not take damage. And you can see I did 10 damage right there. You got to move around a lot during this fight. And once you get used to it, you can pretty much kill him without taking any damage at all. And if you do have it on hard, he's going to attack quite a bit quicker. You can see he has a giant health pool. And let me show you one thing. When you break one of his heads, which is going to happen after a while, it actually will spawn in two more heads to replace it, making the battle so much more difficult. So I'm going to try to take one of these out if we can here. I am so on fire. Got to be very careful in this fight. I'd say, though, a lot of moving, and you could pretty much avoid most of the damage. I'm just trying to take one of these heads out, like, as quick as I can here. So he should be heavily damaged now. And a couple more hits in the face, and your head's going to break, bro. It's going to happen. Really soon. I'm not lying. It, oh, there we go. So one of them's going down, and get ready for this. This is so epic. The Hydra is very mad. One more head coming in, and here comes the second one. And I believe you can have up to eight heads or something ridiculous like that. Um, but yeah, his health will go down, and eventually he will die. So the Hydra, quite the tough opponent. And the more you damage him, the more heads that will die, and the more heads that will spawn in, making the battle even harder the further you go into it. So guys, I almost got him down here. One more hit, and there we go. The Hydra is dying. I love how they die, too. It's so awesome looking. And there we go. He dropped a bunch of stuff right here. Let me grab this. He's like still like disappearing. And he dropped 30 Hydra Chops, which is like really good food. He dropped his trophy and also fiery blood. And if I use this, I can make the ingots, which of course are for the armor. So definitely very cool if you kill the Hydra. So guys, this mod actually adds in a ton of mobs too. And look at my inventory, all mob eggs. So yeah, there's so many that I'm just going to spawn them in in creative and kill them because this would take forever to do. All right, first one, Carmenite Broodling. It is a very tiny spider. Only has seven health, so insta-kill right there. This one, Block and Chain Goblin. That is pretty awesome. Look at that thing he's holding. That looks heavy for you, bro. How do you carry that? He's got 20 health, another easy mob. Basically, you'll see a lot of these dudes in the dungeons on your way to the boss fights. This one, Lower Goblin Knight. Awesome models, by the way. He's got a cool shield right there. Just blocked my attack. But if you hit him in the back, nothing he can do about it. Come back here. And there's like a little dude. He was on like a little dude's shoulders. Look how tiny he is. He looks so scared. I'm sorry. I must finish you off. All right. So the next one is the helmet crab. So it's a little crab, as you can see right here. 13 health. And we will kill that as well. All right. Next one. The night phantom. And this one is still a work in progress. It's got 35 health and... I think I know why it's a work in progress. <laughs> it just flies away. It's gone forever after that. But yeah, there are quite a few like mobs and animals in this mod. All right, next one. Let's see here. The Carmenite Golem. And I want to spawn in... Um, Let's see. What do I got here? My Zombie Scepter. Go after him. There we go. Those have 40 health. They are somewhat powerful. Let's spawn a couple of these. And it is raining again. Let's clear this. Ever since the Urgas did this... It has been raining too much. Way too much. Alright, this one. The Towerwood Borer. It is like a little silverfish with a different texture. This one. The Carmenite Gast Guard. Giant gas right there. Only has 30 health. Gas just happened to be, you know, kind of fat, as you can see. So we'll kill that dude. Does the same thing as a normal Ghast. This one. The Fire Beetle. 25 health. And the Slime Beetle. And yeah, those ones actually, like, light you on fire. Poor zombie. And guys, about these loyal zombies, I think after a while, they actually do light on fire and die once they've been out for a long time, which is something I've noticed too. All right, so we've showed all of these. Yeah, really, I mean, there are so many different mobs to show. I wanted to give you guys all like a quick look at them, so this is probably the best way to do it. Did he just die? I I'm so sorry. All right, this one, Pinch Beetle. It actually grabs you. And, like, picks you up. It's really annoying. You have to, like, kill it to get it off you. He's still fighting till his dying day. Next one. Maze Slime. It's a giant slime. 
It's cool looking though. Just like a normal slime, once you kill one, it goes into others. Alright, let me get some more of these. We need more zombies to help me kill. Okay, so the next one. The Red Cap Sapper. Little dude right there. Feel kind of bad killing him. He's, got, he's just going mining. Mindi minding his own business. Almost said mining his own business. And this one, the Mist Wolf. 30 health. Are they going to fight him? No. You won't fight the wolf. He's kind of cool looking. I won't hurt you, bro. Your eyes look weird. You look exhausted. All right, so this one is the King Spider. And you can see there's like a skeleton druid on top of it. It's like a spider jockey. He's got what looks to be a golden hoe in his hand. It's exactly what he needed. All right, so quite a few more to show here. All right, so I'll grab all these. Like, I, and there's more in the chest, too. This wasn't every single one. The Firefly, you know, I'm not going to kill that. You'll see him, like, around the forest. A very small ghast, tiny one. A penguin. The penguins are so cool looking. Look at the little penguin. I couldn't hurt you. And this one, Forest Squirrel. So a lot of animals around here, too. A tiny bird, which you will see. And, obviously, all my zombies are dying. I'm sorry. Look at this ghast. It is such a small ghast. But still, they're scary. You know, you look and all of a sudden it's shooting a fireball at you. Gotta be careful. Alright, so a lot of these, I think, might be animals. Not sure. This one is the forest bunny. Yeah, look at the little tiny bunny. Three health. Hedge spider with 16 health right here. And I think those are in, like, mazes. I'm pretty sure there's spawners for those. The minotaur. In the minotaur's place, you'll be fighting these on your way to the boss. All right, next one, wild boar. So another way to get like um, pork in this dimension, which is cool. The bighorn sheep. And yeah, this is a way to get wool in the dimension. As I mentioned before, the questing ram requires all wool. And probably the easiest way to get it is from the bighorn sheep, which prowl all around and they're all different colors. All right, so only a few more. It's like taking forever to go through every single one. All right, I'll grab all these. And let me actually get back to the chest too. There's a few more I left in there. There's my chest. But yeah, as you can see, this is a massive mod. And actually, I put it off for a while because I just didn't have time to review it. Because there's just so much stuff to show. All right, next one. Mosquito Swarm. And this one, Cobalt. It's got 13 health. A Death Tome. I actually like this one. It, like, shoots, I think, fire at you. It's, it's a book. You can fight a book. And it does drop paper and books, as you could probably imagine. A Swarm Spider little tiny purple spider wild deer so there is a lot of ways to get like meat and stuff here too there's all kinds of animals around and it looks like we only have six left to show all right awesome okay so this one hostile wolf looks very angry right now twilight wraith is like a ghost that like flies through the sky a forest raven as i mentioned before very important for one of the crafting recipes the red cap I like his pickaxe. <laughs> Alright, this one. Wild boar, I already showed that. What am I doing? And skeleton druid. This one, we saw him riding the other dude before. So yeah, guys, that is all the different mobs. There are a lot you will encounter in this dimension. Twilight Forest actually has a lot of really unique items too. And here they are. First one, the uncrafting table. I feel like I should show the recipe on this one. A bunch of crafting tables with a maze map focus in the middle. And really what it does is it actually on crafts something. So let me grab like a sword, iron sword right here. And we will on craft it. And all you have to do is put it in like that. And it's going to show you exactly what you'll get back. And it costs you two enchantment levels to get this one. So you just click and grab that stuff. So if you, if you have like extra materials, extra weapons, this is what you can do. So very cool, very useful. And I believe you can craft in here too. Let me see. Test this out. So yeah, you can use it for both. It's got it's like double purpose. How awesome is that? All right, the next one. This is one of my personal favorites right here. The Moonworm Queen. You can find it in dungeons and um, does have a recipe, but the recipe is just to like bring its durability back up. You take it and put torch berries next to it. And this is what these worms are that are dancing on top. So it's basically like a torch, except it has durability instead. And you could shoot it like hundreds of times. And put worms down that light areas up. And I believe it costs less durability if you just right click the ground. But if you throw it, you can actually like, you know, light up a ceiling and stuff like that too. Which is very useful. 
The next one is the ore meter, and this one is still a work in progress. But basically, you right click and it tells you where you can find this stuff, like the locations of like coal, iron, and gold. I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to mean here. So very cool at the moment, just a work in progress though. All right, this one, the ore magnet. So I set this up right here. You see that iron at the bottom? So basically, if you're in an area, you don't see any ore, but you're in a cave. You can use this and it will actually pull it up to the surface. So hold it back, let go, and now it is at the surface. Now that is pretty sick. I've never seen anything like that before and I just think it's awesome. But yeah, if you want to make this one, you can't, you have to find it in a dungeon. I totally thought there was a recipe, I just pressed R and noticed there was nothing. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I've actually seen these in dungeon chests before too. And that is how you're going to get a lot of this stuff. Just like the transformation powder. All right, so I'm going to grab a couple different things here. And this one is kind of just for fun. Like a wild deer, if I use this on it, it is now a cow. I can even, like, switch it back. So if you don't like deers, but you prefer cows, there you go. And chickens, I am so sick of chickens. Yes, a penguin, so much better. I mean, look at that. That is cool, right? So you can actually, like, change animals. And if you get sick of penguins, you can always change it back to a chicken. All right, so um, let's see what is next here. The crumble horn. And what this does, it actually like changes rocks. Like this right here is stone. So now it turned it into cobblestone. And I believe if I use it on this, it will turn it into gravel. So it actually like changes blocks. It's, it's very cool. And I think you can actually break blocks too. At least I did before. Yeah, hold it back and break the blocks. So you can actually change the blocks. Very interesting. So there's definitely some unique stuff in this mod. All right, so this right here is the charm of keeping. And you'll find this in chests, and you can actually make a better one out of it. Like if I use this, put them together, charm of keeping two, and a charm of keeping three. And what it does is when you die, with the charm of keeping one, you'll keep like one item. With charm of keeping two, you'll keep some stuff. And if you have the charm of keeping three, you'll keep all your stuff when you die. So very useful, especially when fighting bosses. And this, the Charm of Life, I believe when you're about to die, this one will heal you a bit. And of course, you know, the Charm of Life 2 is a bit better. This right here, the Peacock Feather Fan. All right, you got to check this out. So what it's really used for is blowing back like mobs. Like, bye cow. It's good for like escaping and stuff. But you actually can do something really cool with it. If you jump and then use it, it launches you into the air. That is so sick. But yeah, you have to time it correctly. Jump, bam, and I am flying. So if there's a lot of mobs around, what you're supposed to do is just, you know, blow them back like that and run away. But you can also, like, sprint, jump, bam, and go flying out of the area. And guys, as mentioned, there is a little bit of food in the mod. There is Meef. You can make Meef Stroganoff, Maze Wafers, and Experiment 115. So a couple interesting food items here. And now I just want to quickly show you guys what this structure looks like. I'm not going to go through every single structure or anything like that. It would take forever and it would kind of ruin the fun for you guys when you check the mod out yourself. And look at this place. It is awesome. It's a huge building. All different rooms are going to have like chests and stuff in them. And at the top is basically where you're going to find all the bosses. And yeah, I don't want to go in and ruin it for you, but this place is pretty amazing. Everything was built like so good. But yeah, I do want to show you guys a hollow hill really quickly. So I'm going to grab a map and try to get towards one. So guys, if you look on the map right here, you can see I'm right next to a giant hollow hill. And these ones will be obvious anyway. I mean, look at this giant hill in the middle of nowhere here. So basically, underneath this is a giant cave with so many rewards. And you can break in like this, but you're going to fall eventually. I have a feeling we're going to fall eventually. There we go. So now... I am inside and this place is completely filled with rewards i'll show you guys quickly like this is one of the bigger ones the small ones are very tiny and there are less spawners and less chests but yeah spawners all over the place they're actually really challenging the chest right here and quite a few different things like an ironwood pick some food and stuff like that but probably the main focus of this is the ceilings completely covered in ore and you're never going to find diamonds like this in, like, vanilla Minecraft. There's going to be so many diamonds and emeralds while you're down here. So you really have to keep your eyes peeled. And I will try to show you guys some right here. There happens to be, like, none around me. All right, right here. Some emeralds on the ceiling. 
So you'll be in here for a while because a lot of the stuff is actually like directly on the ceiling. So you need to like climb the walls. It's it's really difficult, especially with all the skeletons like trying to knock you off. But there is ore everywhere. This place is completely insane. So much stuff around. You really need like the backpack mod even to like explore this. You're going to leave with so much ore. And yeah, a bunch of diamonds right here too. So very cool. Um, but anyways, guys, that's about all there is to show with this mod. It is a giant dimension mod with so many bosses and a lot of really cool stuff. If you want to check it out, the download, of course, is in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed. And I will see you guys next time for another Minecraft video.